Uh, welcome to episode 18 of New Esports TV. I, I honestly don't even know anymore. Um, there will be a little episode number down in the uh, in the title of the video. That's you'd think I'd know, right? I think it's 18. It could be 17. It could be 16. I don't know. Um, and now that there's a zone league show, then that confuses me too. Um, what it is, it's round 10 of the new FM First Division. This is Saturday night, um, live from not New York. This very far from New York here, um, in the quiet area of Mayfield. It's hardly New York, um, but it is Saturday night, and that's a 45 second video I've just wasted. So let's just get straight into it. Yeah, today I went to um, West Wall's End, uh, Johnson Park, the name of the ground, of course. Um, to watch West Walls End play Cessnock City in what I thought would be some very physical games and what were some very physical games. Um, first of all, under 17s, West Walls End 4 defeating Cessnock City 0. Um, yeah, pretty comprehensive sort of victory here. Westy started the better of the two sides, they had an early chance early on. Uh, early chance early on. It's going to be one of those going to be a typical video, this one where there's a billion mistakes. Josh Knight got around Tory Beveridge in goals but could only find the side of the net and I tell you right now that side, the sides of the nets today were hit an incredible amount of times. Um, lots of shots off target today. Uh, the opening goal would come from Brock Taylor scoring Another goal for the season, it seems, every time I go to watch this West Walls N17 team, Brock Taylor gets on the score sheet. A um, few more chances for Westy in the first half. Cessnock just struggled to create chances. Um, Jaden Lee missed a chance early on in the second half for West Walls End, but Jared Hader would make it 2-0. Tory Beveridge pulling off a decent save to keep it at 2-0, and then Mitchell Lindsay stopping what was going to be a goal, um, a goal line, um, no, not really clearance, but just a goal line deflection off the defender, saving it really. Um, two more goals to Josh Knight and Mitch, um, not Mitch Kramer, J Jared Hayter. Um, two goals each for Knight and Hayter. Mitch Kramer was voted man of the match. Um, standouts in my mind, Brock Taylor, Jared Hayter. Um, Knighty did all right, I guess. Probably should have had more than two goals with the amount of chances he had, but um, uh, Kai Drayton played well at centre back, which uh, I'm not sure what the what the idea is there. If if he's played centre back before, probably has. I don't know, but um, most of the time I watch him, he's a striker, so that seemed like a bit of a weird choice. But he did well there. Uh, Cessnock there, uh, Aaron Comerford. I think every t every time I watch this team play, um, Aaron Comerford's the first name that I mention. Um, very decent player, and um, it showed he got on the bench for the 19s as well. Um, Will Forbes, arguably unlucky not to get uh, a goal or two up front, but apart from that, um, not their best performance, and they were not the better side today. West Walls End were the better side, and they got the win, and they move ever so close to Lake Macquarie City at the top of the table. Westy, of course, have the bye next week, so Lakes... I think Lakes play Westy in a couple of weeks. Um, I don't know if it's based on when they played in, in the first half of the season, but I think they played in what round three or something. So within the next month, I think West Walls then play Lakes. Uh, I might be wrong there, but uh, when they do play, that's going to be a very uh, high quality game in the 17s, perhaps even a grand final preview uh, if we want to go into that sort of stuff early on. But uh, Cessnock. Um, yeah, not their best performance in the 17s, and beaten. Um, under 19s, West Walls End 7, defeating Cessnock City 0. Um, from, look, this was always probably on the cards. I don't know what I tipped for this game. It was probably 7-1 or something like that. Um, that's not, that's not a, it is a direct shot at, at uh, Cessnock. Let's be, let's be honest about that. It's me saying Cessnock aren't the best team in this comp. They know that. West Walls End are probably the best team in this comp, so it's always going to be a hard game. Cessnock have a couple of injuries. They've, they've just not had luck on their side this year, the Cessnock 19s, and it's got to that point where they know that the finals is probably out of the question. So um, 
I don't know, I think... Well, let's, let's just go through the game first, eh? Um, Matt Turner opened the scoring, Greg Mason claimed to make it two. I still don't know. I, I gave him the goal over the uh, speaker. I was running the PA there. Um, people were saying own goal. Someone scored it, and Greg Mason claimed it 2-0. Um, Cessnock were re well, not reduced to ten men. They weren't. Uh, they, were, they were... I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Justin Bradley got injured. Um, that's what I'm trying to say. They weren't reduced to ten men. There was a substitute, and that was Aaron Comerford, so the 17s player getting a chance to come on early. But... Um, I've got written down the 12th minute here, it actually happened in the 7th minute, it took 5 minutes um, to get him onto a stretcher and off the field. This, this was pretty, um, pretty worrying scenes, um, watching one of Cessnock's better players in this grade, um, one of their hard working players in this grade get stretched off and um, I did provide an update earlier from the coach, I got an update. Um, a badly dislocated ankle and a possible broken fibula or tibula. Um, I've actually heard from the player himself and um, I think it was a fi broken fibula and some ankle, um, broken ankle bone or something and dislocated ankle and um, I actually, um, the, the 19s match and first grade match were filmed today um, not by me, um, I'm always I'm too busy to do that but um, my granddad has, has a camera and um, has been helping out the last couple games and um, yeah, he's, he's enjoying it and I'm enjoying watching the footage. So uh, I think the first grade game's going up on YouTube tonight and the 19s game will probably go up. So uh, I do have a 20 second clip of uh, Justin Bradley's injury uh, that I sent to the coach and to Justin himself. Um, pretty. I don't want to say horrific. Horrific might not be the right word. Horrific, you think compound, compound fracture or whatnot, but um, it was horrific. I'm not going to lie. Um, he was uh, chasing down a uh, Westie player. Cessnock turned the ball over sloppily. Sloppily? That's not a word. Um, monopoly, sloppily, similar. Um, he's chasing down the player and just goes sort of, sort of a slide in. And he... Um, it wasn't on the slide, he went to get up and his ankle, I believe, his foot was facing the wrong way, the left foot and... I don't know, you've got to, you've got to see the video. If it's up, if, if, you, if you don't like that sort of stuff, don't watch it. Um, it's seven minutes into the game, there's a reminder for you. Um, but it, it's pretty gruesome um, and he will be out for the rest of the season. Well wishes to Justin. And uh, look, this, this injury and the resulting change, Aaron Comerford coming on, very good player in his own right, but um, that would have shook them up a little bit, Cessnock, especially already 2-0 down and then watching when your players get stretched off. Um, Jared Arrighetti gave away a penalty. Jared? Did I say Jared or Jaden? I meant to say Jaden. Jaden Arrighetti giving away a penalty, uh, converted by James Barnes. Matt Turner scored a second just before half time, and then the second half of more of the same. Sam Jones scored an easy tap in. Um, the least celebrated goal I've ever seen anywhere. Um, I don't even know. I think he realised how bad the goal was, how bad it was to concede. Westy were just going through the motions at this point. 5 0. Um, this was an awful goal to concede for Cessna. Just um, falling apart at the back. Liam Keating, that's probably the smallest player on the field, scored a header for the second week in a row. I think that, that sums up uh, Cessnock's defence today. It wasn't their best. Um, the, the cross was good, and as soon as the cross went in, I thought the keeper's going to gonna struggle to get this, and Brendan Zekel fumbled it. Keating heading it in, and uh, Sam Jones with a classy finish right at the end, or towards the end, to make it 7-0. 15 goals for the season, Sam Jones, and at the moment he is the top goal scorer in the entire competition. Uh, I'm not sure who's second. I know Sam Walker's up there. Lakes have the bye, so uh, Sam Jones is, is is doing very well this year, and the Westy 19s especially are doing very well this year. Uh, 40, 40 goals? No, not 40. 30 something goals. He has 15 of them, so that tells you that it's not a one man team. It's not anything like that. There is 
players from front to back, side to side in this team, West United's, this grand final, potentially grand final winning team uh, for West Wall's end there. Uh, under 23's, uh, West Wall's end 4, defeating Cessnock City 1. Um, Matt Zeckel, it's always the Zeckels, isn't it? They're always doing crazy things. He took a shot from the kickoff. Um, a really strange move. Liam Muir was the goalkeeper for Westie. Um, he was off his line a little bit, but you got to be pretty good to score from halfway, and Matt Zeckel did miss the target, and even if he got the target, I, I don't know. Um, probably a poor choice on reflection anyway. Liam Stevenson showed a lot of quality for Cessnock. Um, Mitchell Cox was also pretty good. Um, I think it's Mitchell. He was Michael on one team sheet. He was Mitchell on the other. Um, that's just that's great, isn't it? Um, it's one of the two. Um, I'm going to go with Mitchell. I think that's I think that's right. Uh, he hit the post midway through the half. Cessnock looked the better side, but um, and Josh Knight found the net again um, after his two goals in the 17s. Scored a goal. Um, to make it 1-0. Brody Egan missing a chance for Cessnock. Um, both teams, this, this should have been 3-1 to Cessnock at half time based on the opportunities and stuff. Lots of missed chances. And yeah, as I said, Josh Knight scored right on half time. A bit of a sucker punch to those in yellow and black. Uh, Josh Knight scored again in the second half. 10 minutes in, then he missed a penalty. Could have had a hat trick, Knighty. Didn't. A uh, penalty saved by Shannon Atwell, who came on. No, don't worry about that. That's first grade. Um, Grant Morrow missed a decent chance, and then Mitchell Cox coolly slotted one away for Cessnock. 2-1. Suddenly the game was back on a little bit, uh, but Pat Baker killed it off 3-1, and then Jackson uh, Cooper scoring for Westie after scoring three last week at the Athletics Field. Um, first grade, West Wall's end 6 well, actually, let's let's talk about that result first. The 23s, um, big win for Westie. Um, I don't, I can't remember the table, but it, it takes them up to 10 points, I believe. And um, depending on tomorrow's results, that's probably two, two, maybe three wins, two or three wins out of the top four. It can be done. Westie 23s can make the finals. Cessnock 23s can still make the finals. Decent competition the 23s, and it's certainly the standard this year is so much better than last year. Um, I don't know who to give credit for for that. The clubs, I guess, uh, could be a good start. Uh, first grade, West Walls end 6, defeating Cessnock City 1. Um, opening 20 minutes, very even. Uh, you could even say Cessnock were probably the better team in the opening period of the game. They almost had a lead from an own goal. Bailey Cox sort of almost tapping the ball into his net. Um, hit the post. Fortunate. Could argue for a back pass, but um, it wasn't anyway. It went to the goalkeeper. Um, Matt Zeckel was quality early on in goals this time for Cessnock. Of course, was the striker in the earlier game. Um, pulled off one or two crucial saves, including one from Chris Hughes, um, Zeckel's defenders, they let him down multiple times and the first time they let him down uh, Chris Hughes took the advantage and scored a goal, 1-0 Ty Jones scored a double to make it 3-0 6 minutes to go in the half uh, Jared Olivieri, the big dog, as he's known out there at Westy he scored again um, I, I'm not even... I'm counting but I haven't done my stats yet I think that's what, 4 or 5 goals for the season Oliveri scoring goals. What what is happening? What? <laughs> um, there was none of that. Hardly any of that last year. Um, but no credit, credit to Jared. This this was a pretty decent finish. And I said to him after the game that you know you get it in off the bar. He said you, he said he didn't mean to do that, but it comes off as looking very cool when you when you hit it and it just smashes in off the bar. And uh, four nil to Westy anyway. Uh, Oliveri getting that goal. Oliveri or Olivieri? It's one of the. It's Oliveri. Uh, Olivieri. Um, I'm not good with names. 
Um, that's why they shouldn't give me a microphone, but they do. I do. Um, at this point of the game, there was only one team in it. Um, I don't need to say who it was, obviously. 4-0. Uh, second half was much of the same. Dom Langowski appeared to score a goal. I believe it was Dom. Um, it was ruled out for either an offside or a foul or something like that. Um, Cessnock's day just got worse. Matt Zeckel uh, getting forced off with an injury. Looked looked a little bit groggy, a little bit concussed. I don't know what the injury was. Um, he did walk out of the ground later, so he was he was, looked fine at that point at the end of the day. Um, just a bit disappointed. Uh, Shannon Atwell came in. He couldn't do anything to stop Ryan Cole from scoring a fifth goal. Um, West Walls and Michael Bailey sent off um, correct decision, denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. You give the, in this situation, you may see the replay if I put it up. I don't know if it's in the video or not. But um, guys threw on goal, still outside the box, but last man. Um, so Michael Bailey sent off, and Westy, that, they just can't afford to keep having red cards. Um, it sort of puts a bit of a downer on a 6 1 win, but. They won't mind, they've got the bye next week and then they're back, um, I believe, against South Cardiff um, in two weeks' time out there at Ulinga. Um, that's a ground I've got to get to soon, I'll tell you that much. I'll be getting there sooner rather than later. It's the only ground I haven't been to this year. Looking forward to seeing Southie play again. Um, Westie, they made it 6-0. Ryan Van Kemenade, um scoring a, a smashing header. Um, he, his brother was in the team for, what, two or three weeks, but I think he took off overseas or something. But uh, th this guy, um, I think, what, he's 18, 19, he, he is massive. He is one of the biggest, um, and not I don't, I don't mean big as in fat, I mean big as in tall and solid and scoring headers and typical defender build. Um, I'm a big fan of big centre-backs. Um, great goal. Great typical centre-back goal. 6-0 to Westy. And then with literally 10 seconds left, Cessnock scored a goal through the captain, Anthony Bauer, to make it 6-1. Um, and to probably have uh, Gary Rowe ripping his hair out or his beard or something like that. Um, you certainly would have wanted a clean sheet at that point. So a slight disappointment there. Um, Cessnock for them, it's it's much much of a muchness really, 6-0, 6-1. Um, they started well but they fell apart and this was one of the worst performances. Um, that last 70 minutes of the game was one of the worst performances I've seen from a team this year um, in any grade. Uh, it was, they never looked likely of making a game out of it when it got to 3 or 4-0. Um, I spoke to Steve Thompson afterwards. I uh, had, had a good ch chat with Tomo, which is something I haven't done before. Um, sort of said hello here and there, but... Um, realistic coach, uh, Tomo, and... Um, I think we all know Cessnock probably have the lowest budget. I, I don't know, maybe Toronto. Um, but they're one of those teams that... Um, they're probably not going to challenge for finals, but... Um, a performance like that today, Tomo was realistic. He said they they played like crap. I, that probably not his words, but that was pretty much his words. Um, said they they lost their shape, lost discipline, um, what have you. But what I did like from Tomo is that he said next week they'll try and bounce back and play with some pride, you know. And that's that's the least you can do when you lose six one. You can just go to next week and just forget about it and just put on a performance like the performance that they had when they beat uh, Bell Swans a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm trying to think who they have next week up there at uh, Cessnock. Um, Forton, I think it's at... It is at Cessnock. I don't think it's at Forton. I'm not sure on that one. Um, that's a tricky game for them. We'll see how Forton go tomorrow. Um, so this has gone for 20 minutes. That's probably a little bit over time. West Wall's end, real quickly, they move into fifth based on tomorrow's result between Fortin and Cooks Hill, it could be, you know, if that's a draw, then suddenly West Wall's End are in the prime position to maybe move in the top four in the next few weeks. 
their season is definitely not over. Um, Cessnock's finals hopes probably are. Um, let's be real about that. Uh, they could be bottom if Singleton win tomorrow against Toronto Awaba. Uh, NPL results. Played last night, Edgeworth versus Hamilton Olympic. Uh, under 19s, Edgeworth 2 0. Under 23s, under 22s, I should say, Edgeworth 3 1. And in first grade, Edgeworth 2, defeated by Hamilton Olympic 3. Um, big win for Olympic. Very, very tough place to go to, Jack McLaughlin Oval. And uh, for the table, I think that puts Olympic on top. Um, maybe Magic might be. I, I don't know. I haven't really looked at the MPL table uh, today, but. That's a big win for Olympic away from home. Um, real quickly, the FFA Cup coming up soon. I'll tell you, with Bromeadow Magic out and a couple of other, you know, NPL teams and big NPL teams, um, Edgeworth still in it. I think Edgeworth go through and I think Olympic go through. I think this, this year is a very good chance for Hamilton Olympic to make the round of 32. I think I've said that before on one of these videos. Um, big win for them. Uh, the Jaffers against Charlestown City today, under 19's Jaffers 1-0, Lampton, that is, I'm sure you all know who the Jaffers are. Um, under 22's Lampton 2, Charlestown 1, and in first grade, how about this, Lampton Jaffers 1, defeated by Charlestown City Blues 3. Um, I don't know what to say about that, Charlestown, I watched them play in the FA Cup in pre-season, um, I've heard some things apparently... They haven't really, they've flown under the radar, I'd say. Some people have said that they're not really that good of a team. and Well, they've just gone to Lampton, they've won today. So, um, I'll have to give them some credit for that. I don't know how they played, I wasn't there. But um, I can watch the replay on Bar TV. There's a shout out. Um, and I might, no, I won't do that. I don't, I don't have the time to be watching replays from the weekend. But um, Lampton beaten at home. Any time. That is very rare. So, uh, James Pascoe has taken over there at Lampton. Uh, they're, in, they're in a little bit of a situation at the moment, losing that game. Uh, we'll see what happens next week. Uh, Newcastle Jets Youth versus Broadmeadow Magic at Magic Park. Uh, Jets Youth, I, I went to this game last year and it was just awful performance from the Jets Youth. Um, not sure if they did any better today. The score suggests maybe, maybe not. Um, under 19s, the Emerging Jets under 16s team, 5, defeating Broadmeadow Magic, 3. Um, emerging Jets 16s is a very good team, I'll tell you that. Playing, what, 2 or 3 years up, um, I believe they've got a lot of... I believe... I, I don't know what I believe. Um, I got messaged something from there a few weeks ago, and I don't remember what it was. Um, what I do believe is that they picked up a big win at Magic against Magic. 1-1 uh, in the under-22s, the under-18 Emerging Jets, am I confusing you yet? Um, drawing Broadmeadow Magic, and in first grade, the Jets Youth 1, defeated by Broadmeadow Magic 4. Um, big, big win for Magic, again, I think they're probably top of the league, or thereabouts. Maybe not, after last week's draw with Edgeworth. Um, let's move on. <laughs> That's the best I can do. Um, NPL under 17's results today. Hamilton Olympic 2 defeating the under 15 Emerging Jets 1. Maitland and Adamstown. I still don't have the score from there. I'll try and get that tomorrow night. And Western Bears 1 defeated by Broadmeadow Magic 3. Uh, and Zone League results. I will leave until the Zone League show. And hopefully I will record that on time this week. So that's all we got to do here for New Esports TV on Saturday night. I'll be back tomorrow for reviewing Fortin versus Cooks Hill. And I'll tell you what, it's been a long day. Um, for those who follow the New Esports Facebook, you would have seen I, I um, went down to Sydney last night, saw Iron Maiden, the best metal band of all time. Um, that's argue that's just debatable. Um, got home at 1.30 in the morning, got to bed at 2, got up at 8 or something, go to Westie, do the PA, do the photos. It, it's, been, it's been a long marathon day today, but um, I enjoyed it. And looking forward to going to Fortin tomorrow. I don't know why I'm saying that now, because this doesn't go up till Monday night, but 
um, hello Fortin people, I'll see you tomorrow, um, and I would have seen you yesterday. Confusing, yeah? Um, anyway, this is just going on way too much. I'm going to go s sit back and watch uh, Middlesbrough versus Brighton. It's probably over, so I'm going to go see who won that, the championship um, second place slash first place decider, I guess, if Burnley lose. Not sure if they did. Um, anyway, that's it. Let's end it there. Leicester City EPL champions. Um, BPL champions, for those of you who don't like the word English Premier League, Barclays Premier League, something. They're Premier League champions. And they'll get the title tonight, 2.30 against Everton. I will not be watching that live. Um, that's it. End of story. We're done. See you tomorrow night, New Esports TV, episode 17, 18, whatever it is. Part 2, coming to you in about 5 seconds. See you then. Uh, welcome back to whatever episode number this is of New Esports TV. Um, 24 hours later, I still don't know what episode number this is. Um, it's round 10 of the New FM First Division, and today there were 4 games. So let's get straight into it, because I don't want to be sitting here for 40 minutes uh, at 11 o'clock on a Sunday night when I have to get up at, what, 8 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Um, Under-17s today, Fortin versus Cooks Hill was the feature match today. Um, Under-17s, Fortin, Redbacks, nil, defeated by Cooks Hill United. Uh, four, six, I should say, not, not four. Um, I don't know where I got that from. Where did I get that from? Did I get that from yesterday's Under-17s game? Maybe I did. Uh, I think I did. Yes, I did. Okay, there you go. Cooks Hill 6 defeating Fortin nil uh, at Fortin Park. Uh, a new thing that debuted today on New Esports, uh, on the Facebook review especially, is um, goal scorers in, you know, it says Fortin Redbacks nil defeated by Cooks Hill United. Harabakunzi, Guest, Wormsley, Allen, Dalton and White. Penalty. 6. So it has all the goal scorers in the actual headline. Um, I don't know, I like that idea, and um, for those who know, I go through um, at the end of each weekend and get every single goal scorer, and that makes it a lot easier, rather than scanning through the article looking for goals. Uh, anyway, it took three minutes for Cook Seal to take the lead. Um, I feel like this camera is very far away today. Um, I'm, I don't know what's happening, but um, new tripod, and it's, I don't know, it's not in the right position, but... Um, Gilbert Harabakunzi continued his good form. Three minutes into the game, 1-0 to Cooks Hill. Um, Fortin had a chance to equalise through Nicholas Ryle. I'm going to try and stop looking down so much. I've watched the videos, it's painful. So I might, I might try and hold that there. Does that work? I don't, think, I don't think that works. I need like a little holder right under the camera for the iPad. I need a teleprompter, something like that. I don't know. Um, Campbell Guest doubled the lead. I'm just, I'm stalling, aren't I? I'm stalling already. Sasha Keats played well for Fortin all game, I thought, but um, Cameron Wormsley scored, chipping Blake McDonald in goal. 3 0 at half time to Cooks Hill. Only one side heading for the win here, and it was the same after the break. Aiden Heskiff did okay for Fortin, but um, Cooks Hill would score again. Raiden Hobson with the corner. Um, it came back to him, and uh, he crossed it perfectly, straight into Fergus Allen. Great stuff by Raiden, and a good finish by Fergus Allen as well. 4-0 to the Cookers. Gilbert Harabakunzi taking off down the wing several times, nearly scored from an acute angle. Um, but yeah, captain of the team, Michael Dalton, literally strolled through the Fortin defence. Um, probably beat four or five players from midfield. It's not good. It's not a good look when a central defensive midfielder is just getting the ball and just easing his way through your defence and slotting it home for 5-0. Um, Michael Dalton played well today. Very good addition to the Cookers side. Uh, Fortin's goalkeeper, Blake McDonald, very, very lucky not to concede one or two off of some goal kicks that went horribly wrong. Uh, it just wasn't Fortin's day. It was probably the worst performance I've seen them put in, and um, I have been. I've only been there for what three games, I think. Um, I'm not sure if they've played this bad all season. That's how bad it was. Um, Damon White converting from the penalty spot. Cooks Hill six nil. 
uh, end of story right there. Uh, credit to Damon for coming back on after getting hit in the face and a bloodied mouth hit in the face with a football, not a fist, um, thankfully. Um, and yeah, credit, he came back on and he um, went straight back to it and scored a goal. All class from Cooks Hill and nothing to answer for it from Fortin. Under 19s, Fortin Redbacks 2, defeated by Cooks Hill United 3. Um, this game, uh, at half time, I thought we're heading, we're heading for another 6 0. You know, yesterday at West Wall's End, there wasn't really any games where Cessnock were in it. Um, that's with respect. So this was five games straight, including the 17s today, where it wasn't a two sided game, it was completely one sided. So I did want to see, even though I had the Cook Seal shirt on, I've still got the Cook Seal shirt on, I wanted to see Fortin bring something to the table. And they did. Very late, though. Uh, let's talk about it. Uh, Jared Neal was deployed on the left flank, which I didn't take too much notice last week. I was preparing to go play a game. Um, I'm not sure if he moved from fullback to wing last week or midfield. He played forward today, and he did very well. Um, a, p a personal favourite of mine in the Cooksill 19s team, even last year. Very, very talented. Not... Mm, Maybe not talented. When you think talent, you think goals, goals. But he did score today. But I mean, a hard-working, and yes, I guess talented in in a way. Not not the most um, flashy player on the field, but underrated fullback. And there's a lot of them getting around. And uh, Jared is one of those. And he scored two goals in the first uh, half hour or so. The second, a very decent finish, a, a lucky finish as well in off the post, 2-0. Fortin did create a chance or two, but Cooksill took a 3-0 lead into half-time. Ty Cousins with a superb ball into Seb Lewis. 3-0 to the Cookers, 3-0 at half-time. Jared Neal had a chance to make it a hat-trick, but he found the crossbar early in the second half. Jack Halverson was dangerous for Fortin, one of their best players at the moment. Will Miles Schofield scored with three minutes to go, and then moments later, Literally a minute later, Josh Davies scored to make it 3-2, and the panic button was pressed at Cooks Hill. Um, they did have a shaky moment. Fortin came forward. It, it was diffused, and Cooks Hill won the game. But if Fortin had scored those two goals, what, five or ten minutes earlier, then anything could have happened, really. Um, they sit 11 points outside the top four. Um, Cooks Hill sit one point outside the top four, and next week they've got Singleton, then Cahyba, then Bell Swans. Big, big month coming up for Cooks Hill. Uh, under 23s, here we go. Ford and Redbacks 2, defeating Cooks Hill United 1. So the clean sheet wasn't on. And you know, Fortin, after being pretty poor in the 17s game today, they put on a late show in the 19s, but. Their 23s game, that, that they were the better team today. And um, they're a team that, on their day in the 23s, they're quite dangerous. Um, Tim Roger, Rogers, whichever you prefer. I prefer Roger, it sounds fancy. Uh, he was shown a yellow for a very uh, dodgy challenge in the, in the 12th minute. Um, there were some physical challenges all across the park uh, in 23s, and especially first grade as well. Cooks Hill was sloppy at the back, and Nathan Clifton had a chance to score a goal. It, it was saved superbly by Adam Adam Gunster in the Cooks Hill goals uh, with a diving save. Emerson Augie had a chance cleared off the goal line. Both teams scoreless at the break probably shouldn't have been. Definitely shouldn't have been. Fortin controlled the second half chances. Uh, Aidan Fitzgerald pulled off a superb header to stop a ball that was heading into the net two goal line saves by defenders and then not long after that the goalkeeper was at it Jordan Brewer with a superb classy diving save uh, to stop an Asher Beasley shot from going in um, Fortin absorbed the pressure and they gave it to Cooksill they gave it all back um, just like that two goals Nathan Clifton Jacob Robertson bang bang in the space of a minute game over uh, Fortin winning despite a late goal from Giles Boyd Right at the end of the game, Giles played all right today, leading from the front. Lots of communicating from Giles. It just wasn't Cook Seal's day, and it was probably their worst performance of the season uh, that I've seen.
and I just... That's not good for the budget, is it? Um, the iPad's okay. That's, that's very, that's not very good at all. Um, dropping iPads on the ground now. Uh, lucky this room's carpeted. Um, so I've lost my spot. Okay, Giles, um, did play well today. It, it wasn't their day, Cook's Hill, and I've seen, I think I've seen all their games. I don't think I've missed a 23s game this year. Uh, oh, yes, I have, last week. Um, yeah, it was probably their worst performance, and a real team performance from Ford, and Aiden Fitzgerald played really well. Uh, in defence, Jordan Brewer did well in goals as well. Uh, let's move on. First grade, Fortin Redbacks one defeated by Cooks Hill United two. A key side for both, a key game for both sides seasons. Um, a very even game for the most part. Aiden Pelotti had a free kick that hammered off the bar. Um, Tommy Sparre had a chance in the opening twenty. A topsy turvy game, I must say. Uh, Nathan McAllister doing well for Fortin. More on him later. Uh, not positive either, unfortunately, for the Redbacks. Um, Aiden Pelotti had a shot that hammered off the crossbar again, and it landed at the feet of Matt Williams, who calmly placed it into the net. I think it went under the goal goalkeeper. I haven't actually seen. There's some footage. I'll, I'll see the footage later and have a look at that goal. 1-0 uh, to Cook Sill at half time. Um, Fortin ending the first half on the front foot though. Cooks Hill very sloppy at the back at times. Uh, Tommy Sparre continued his performance in the second half and he got he um, got in behind the defender and classy finish into the side of the net. Sparre 2-0 for Cooks Hill. Um, even then they weren't in full control. Fortin came back despite Nathan McAllister getting a second yellow. Sent off the captain in the 60th minute. Uh, Stewie Thompson played well in defence for Cooks Hill. Um, and yeah, the home side were denied a very, very clear foul, a very heated moment. Uh, the Fortin crowd asking if Cooksill paid the ref. I'm from Cooksill, and no, we didn't pay the ref. And I was probably the only one there in black and white that said that is wrong because it was wrong. And I think I have to point that out. The Fortin player was yellow carded for it. It shouldn't have been a Fortin foul. It should have been a Cooksill foul. Fortin free kick. They did get a penalty, Talon Martin converted it, 87th minute, so what, three minutes plus a bit of stoppage time. Um, nervy moments for Cook's Hill, but they held on. Blake Glenny's side, six points outside the top four, Fortin, seven points outside. And my mouth is clicking every time I talk, I don't know what that is, but that's a bit of a worry. Um, we'll go around the grounds in a second. Um... Just getting some Zone League goal scorers at the moment, which I don't need to go through until later in the week. The Zone League show, there's a shout out. Around the grounds in first grade, Kahiba FC 3 defeated Walls End FC 1. A strange game. Um, Walls End apparently dominated a large period of the game, controlled the territory, but they didn't threaten at goal. And I feel like this is a problem for Walls End. I feel like they haven't scored as many goals as, say, Cahyba or Lakes. And despite some games, you know, they haven't been ruthless this year, Wall's End. Um, I feel like that needs to be happening That needs to be happening more often than not. 3-1 um, they were beaten today. Sean Clerk with the hat-trick. Uh, one of those from the penalty spot to seal the win. Mitchell Cook got the goal for Wall's End. And um, arguably a man of the match performance from Jaden Demir. And uh, another fellow youngster at Cahiba, Josh Spencer, played really well as well on the right flank. Um, Sean Clerk, of course, did well. A team performance, actually, from Cahiba. Um, walls end a bit off, to be honest. 3-1. Full-time score there. Cahiba with a big win, arguably their biggest of the year. Uh, Belmont Swansea 3 defeated South Cardiff 1. Uh, Bell Swans took a 2-0 lead with goals to Josh Hall and Fletcher Price. Emmanuel Okamu scored in the 50th minute for Southie. And then 40 minutes passed at 2-1, 2-1, 2-1. Southie just couldn't get that goal. And then Josh Sutton scored right at the end to seal the, seal the win for Bell Swans. Uh, after Ben Cox was sent off in the 25th minute, Bell Swans winning with 10 men. A classy performance, a gutsy win from Brad Paul's side. And another loss for a very inconsistent South Cardiff team. 
after what was a good result at the Gardens last week. Singleton Strikers 4 defeating Toronto Awaba 2. Finally, 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 the Strikers win a game. David Willoughby's side get the win. Captain Jackson's, Jackson Cox scored a double. Sam Ford got one. And Kieran Burrell also got one. Uh, for Toronto, Tim Salter got both goals, one of them from the penalty spot. Um, let's go to Singleton first. They move off the bottom of the table. This is a huge win. This was really needed. If I said if they don't win this, consider themselves favourites for the wooden spoon. They've moved away from that. Finals, I don't think, is a real possibility at the moment. Uh, stranger things have happened. Leicester City are EPL champions. Um, but I can't see Singleton making finals, but I can see them pushing through the second half of the season and getting a respectable, you know, 7th, 8th, 6th sort of spot. I don't know. Um, I think David Willoughby will be taking it one week at a time and see how they go. Uh, this was a good start, finally get that win. Uh, for, uh, that leaves Cessnock dead last. Um, after yesterday's performance, they probably deserve to be there. I'm not sure how long they're going to stay there. If they're going to stay there for the whole season, I don't know. There's a big game, Singleton Cessnock, in two weeks. Um, that will be here, covered on New Esports. I'd like to talk about Toronto. Um, four straight losses, and they've got Cahiba, Walls End, and Lakes coming up. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be sitting here in three weeks' time, and I'll be saying seven straight losses. Uh, that's, that's what it feels like. It's hard to imagine Toronto getting anything out of those games based on the current rate. Um, there's just a lot of negativity going around Toronto and uh, it is a sort of rebuilding year and it's, it's going alright but uh, it's getting worse and it's starting to become very noticeable. 4-2 uh, against Singleton. What can I say? Um, Kieran Burrell voted man of the match for Singleton. In the under 23 is Kahiba 1, Drew Walls End 1. Not really too much to mention. Um, Kahiba told me they missed a lot of chances. Uh, Jez Turner got the goal for them. Trent Richards got the goal for Walls End. He's now the top scorer in the competition for the under 23s. Seven goals for Trent. And I believe six for Jez Turner as well, who's scoring a few this year. Uh, over at Belmont, Belmont 21 defeated South Cardiff 0. Uh, Daniel Horgan with the only goal of the game coming very late in the game, I believe. I may be wrong. Um, I forget. Uh, that's not good. Five yellow cards in the last eight minutes and the goal. So I don't know what was going on there. That's, that's a bit crazy. Belswan's back to the top of the league in the under-23s. Singleton Strikers 3 defeating Toronto Awaba 2. Um, Singleton. All of a sudden, they move on to 10 points. And a look at the 23's table, there are several teams on 10 points. It's a very tight competition, the 23's. I'll, t I'll give you that much. Um, I'll say that much. Um, singled in a big win for them. Goals to James Bates, Tate Edwards and Tom Hume. Uh, Farzad Yagini getting the two goals for Toronto. They actually led 2-0, I believe, and Singleton came from behind to win. James Bates gets man of the match. Uh, as I said, I mentioned Singleton mid-table, potentially. They're on 10 points. Um, there's a lot of teams on 10 points. And then there's, all the way down on one point, is Toronto. Their season, as far as I'm concerned, their season in the 23s ended today. Um, wooden spoon, shortly. Um, you don't want to say that with 10, 10 or 11 games to go, but at the halfway point and, you know, it's just those one goal losses and it just hasn't been good. And um, I believe from reports at the ground, the coach for Toronto um, let his frustration be shown publicly, which it's not. it wasn't a good look, I've been told, for the club. Um, I don't know if there'll be more to that or whatnot, but um, Toronto, very tough day at the office in the 23s. Uh, we go to 19s now, Cahiba 2 defeating Walls End 0. Goals from Bailey Cooper and Isaac Zek getting the job done. Matt Moncrief's side move into uh, one point off of the lead. West Walls End at the top. Walls End's form is stalled 
and uh, makes making finals very tough for Wolves End now. But um, they were beaten by probably the better team today, Kahiba. Very good 19s team. Talking about good 19s team, Belmont Swansea 2 defeating South Cardiff 1. Give Southie some credit. This Bell Swan side have put 8, 11, 9, all these crazy scores in this year at home. Um, Southie led for Jordan Atkin. And then um, Joel Nicholson got back in goal scoring form. And Cameron Lodge also scored to win the game for Bell Swans. 2 1, they get the job done. Southie, unfortunate. But they've still got a lot to work towards this season in the 19s. I think they're still possibly in the run for finals. They may even be in the top four. I don't even know. Um, there's too many teams, too many tables to remember off the top of my head. Uh, up at Singleton. Singleton Strikers 3 defeating Toronto Awaba 2. Uh, fairly back and forth game. Nathan Hall scored another goal. Uh, and then Luke Gibbons on debut. Starting debut for the 19s team. He scored two goals. Nathan Hall got another uh, and I believe Nathan Smart was the one who got the third. I may have the order mixed up. It might have been Hall who won the game. But, um, one of the Nathans won the game for Singleton, and that's a big win uh, for the Strikers in the 19s. They're now four points away from the top four. Toronto sort of still down lower table. Um, Nathan Hall moves to 14 goals for this season across all grades. Very talented player. Sam Jones leading on 15, and I believe Josh Knight is now on 14 goals. That's what happens when he doesn't get sent off. He scores goals. Um, much improved player this year. Let's get back on topic. Uh, man of the match for Singleton went to Tyler Felsch, a very talented midfielder. Jaden Bartlett and Tom Golding also um, got mentions for quality games. Uh, under 17, Kahiba won, defeated by Wolves and FC3. Tristan Newbold opened the scoring, but Wall's End, a very, very good team in the 17s. Uh, Jacob Ray, Daniel Strazeri, and Baraka Barindwa scoring the goals to see the Red Devils move into third. Um, and I know, I think I say this every week, but this team I watched during preseason, they were horrible. They were absolutely horrible. This was their first game. Um, they struggled in their second game. They started the season sort of slowly, and they've just come together as a squad. It's it's been really good to watch. Um, very similar to Wolves End 17s team last year that made the semi-finals. This team will make the semi-finals, um, I think. Uh, Craig Salembus doing a brilliant job there with that team. Um, Jacob Ray in form, you know. Strazeri is a brilliant young player. Uh, Baraka Burindwa, goal scorer is there. Um, talent across the park. Um, <clears throat> interesting enough, um, it's not very off, I don't know, I think Wall's End can sort of do a bit more promoting the 17s into the 19s and maybe even the 23s. It's very rare, I don't know, that's just something that I've noticed. Um, anyway, we move on. Kahiba losing in the 17s, still in the top four. Uh, Belmont Swansea 1 defeated by South Cardiff 2. Harrison Rapp getting the goal for Bell Swans. And uh, Southie, um, I've got the wrong goal scorer here. I've got a Bell Swans player written down for some reason. The team sheet said Nelson Woods scored for Southie. He plays for Bell Swans. So uh, Kyle Bauer was actually the goal scorer. And um, Jay Thompson scored an own goal Bell Swans player. I can't think of his first name at the moment. I think it might be Jaden. I'm not sure. Jai? No, Jai Thompson's at Cessnock. I don't know. 2-1 um, Southie win in the under-17s. They move off the bottom of the table. Singleton go to the bottom of the table. And Bell Swans, um, another loss. And not, not a very good season, the 17s of Bell Swans so far. Uh, Singleton 1, drawing Toronto 1. Singleton now bottom of the table, despite a goal for me and Morris. Uh, Blake... Arthur getting the goal for Toronto to open the scoring. Uh, in the latter stages of the game, here we go. Singleton's Hamish Anderson was sent off straight red card. Uh, Trey Pradlock had the penalty chance saved by Jackson Bartlett in goals for Toronto. 
and apparently Jackson Bartlett was very lucky to stay on the field. Um, goalkeeper was the last man, so should maybe should have been a red card in that case, but 1-1 uh, one, one is the end result. Standouts for Singleton were James Croucher, who had a few chances, and man of the match, Trey Pradlock, who's uh, he's been very good as of late, Trey. Um, missed a penalty, of course, to win the game. That's probably not that good. Uh, let's move on. NPL, Adamstown versus Maitland. Under-19s, Adamstown 2-1. A decent team there. Um, Under-22s, 2-2 two -two draw. 2-2 two -two draw in the 22s. Um, 2 for 22 at 2.22pm. I don't know, cricket jokes. Um, first grade, here we go. This is, this is no joke. Uh, Adamstown 1, defeated by Maitland 6 at Adamstown Oval. Um, that is horrendous. Um, Scott Carter is suspended for four games. The goalkeeper for Adamstown. He's been sent off two or three times this year already. Um, Graham Law will probably be tearing his hair out at the moment um, about what's happening. Adamstown 6-1 loss at home to Maitland. Um, that's very, very poor. Uh, I'm not quite sure if they had anyone sent off today or anything. I don't get team sheets. So, uh, there's no excuse for losing 6-1 at home. Let's just say that. Uh, Western versus Valentine. Western 5-0 in the 19s. Pretty comprehensive. Valentine getting up in the 22s. 3-2. And how about this first grade? Western Workers 1 defeated by Valentine FC 2. Valentine Phoenix winning at Rockwell Automation Park. First time back there since the infamous grand final loss. That's a huge win for Valentine. That's a big confidence booster um, for everyone involved there at the promoted club. Beating a team like Western at home, it's very hard to do. Um, I've been to plenty games at plenty of games up there at Western. Tough team to beat up there. Uh, under 17s, Lambton Jaffers two, drawing Edgeworth two, and Charlestown City three, defeating Mid North Coast one. Valentine FC with a bye. Um, and that is pretty much that. Um, very happy to be finishing this. It has been a very long day. It's been a very long weekend, but it's been a very fun weekend. Uh, next week, actually midweek, midweek I may very well be getting to a zone league game. Um, I have to look at the schedule and see who's playing where, but I believe there's games on. Uh, you probably won't see me at Musselbrook or Bolwara or somewhere like that, unfortunately, but uh, I believe Maryland Fletcher are going to be playing Hunter Simba, and I might, might try and get there for that. Um, definitely want to try and get some catch-up games and watch some zone league football soon. Obviously, it's probably not possible on the weekend with all the new FM coverage, which, on that topic, uh, next week... Cooksville United versus Singleton on Saturday at the Newcastle Athletics Field is the feature match on Saturday. Um, of, I, of course, PA and all that at Cooksville doing all sorts of stuff. Photos, PAs, microphones, all this. Looking forward to having Singleton uh, at my home ground, um, my club's home ground. Uh, my second home, really, at the Newcastle Athletics Field. Loving it these days. Um, and then Sunday, next Sunday, this is going to be a good one across most grades, across all grades actually, this is going to be good. Walls End FC versus Bell Swans at the Gardens. Uh, really looking forward to going out there once again and watching Walls End play. And it's been a while since I watched Bell Swans play, it's been about a month. Um, so looking forward to watching both those teams play. And you know, you think about it, the 17s is Bell Swans on their day, very talented. Uh, Bell Swans 19s against Walls End, that's going to be decent. 23s is going to be a very good game, and first grade is going to be just, it's going to be brilliant. And um, hopefully, we can get some footage of that and upload the entire game. Uh, hopefully, the camera battery doesn't run out this week. Um, so, yeah, that's next week, right here on New Esports, round 11 of the new FM First Division, the halfway point of the season. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, I think we're done. Zone League show on Wednesday night, possibly Thursday night. I'll see you then. If not, I will see you next week 
for whatever episode number it is of New Esports TV, um, my advice is to look at this episode number and then add one. That's what I should do each week, but I don't. Whatever episode number this has been, New Esports TV, I'm Ty Stebbin. I will see you next week. Thank you.